And the school has arranged for a visitor today. Um, so if you could please welcome Miguel. He is from the Council of Three Rivers American Indian Center. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here at Penn Hills High School. And is there a middle school here too? Or is it just the high school, right? All right, so it's nice to be here. I do a lot of these presentations, different schools all over the county, but I don't always get a chance to do one where I live. I'm, I'm, I live in Penn Hills, so it's nice to be here at home, essentially. I, uh, my name is Miguel, and I am from a native tribe, indigenous tribe, that's not from here. My people are from down in Central America, and they were the original people that welcomed Christopher Columbus when he arrived in the Caribbean in Central America. A lot of people hear, you know, Christopher Columbus discovered America, and they think that he came to the United States. But you have to remember, America is not just the United States. America is a gigantic continent that includes the United States, Canada, Mexico, Central America, South America, that's all America. So the part of America that Christopher Columbus came to was Central America, where I'm from. And that's where he stayed, never came to the United States. He never came to the part of, the, of, of America that is now the United States. So I will talk about this area, not about the area where I was born. I'm gonna talk about Western Pennsylvania, which is where we all live. And for that reason, I'm not wearing the regalia, the outfit of my own people, of the Taino people, which is where I'm from. I'm wearing a regalia from the people that used to live here, and still some of them are still around, here in Western Pennsylvania. And they are, most people know them as the Seneca, the Seneca people. They belong to a large group of tribes, and the most important are five, the Seneca, the Cayuga, the Onondagas, the Oneidas, and the Mohawks. And they're actually, their, their nations are lined up. Seneca here in Western Pennsylvania, Western New York, then over to the east, Cayugas, Onondagas, Oneidas, way, way over near New England are the Mohawks. Seneca, Cayuga, Onondaga, Oneida, Mohawks. I'm just going to talk about the Seneca. The Seneca were part of a group called the Longhouse people. They call themselves the Longhouse people. The Haudenosaunee, that's the, in their language. We'll go to the next one, next picture. That's a Longhouse. That's what their houses look like that they used to live in. I'll learn about that. Next picture, please. Now, you can see at the top of the Longhouse, you can see these holes, those are smoke holes. Because the people that were inside, they used to build uh, fires inside their house. So right on top of the roof were these holes. Each one of those holes was inside a compartment. So the longhouse was this long building, looked like a big barn. And inside it had walls. So the first wall, inside the first compartment, there was mom, dad, and kids, what they call a nuclear family, that's mom, dad, and kids. And then when you go through that wall, through the door, to the next compartment, that's another mom, dad, and kids. And the next one, another mom, dad, and kids. So they were all related. All the women were sisters. So if you wanted to visit your aunt's house and your cousins, all you have to do is just go to the next room. There they are. And if you wanted to visit another aunt and uncle, you go to the next room. Now, Way at the end is mom, mom's no, grandmother and grandfather. They lived way over at the end. There's something important about this that I have to tell you about. This building was owned by the old lady, by the grandmother. And each one of the compartments was owned by the mother of that compartment. The husband's they married a woman, they had to move, get their bow and arrow and their moccasins and everything, and move from their mother's house to their in-law's house. So now they live with their, their wife at her house. So you can tell already 
I think you get you started to get an idea that women had a very important role in Seneca society. Women really had a very important role. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that. I want you to think about some places here in Western Pennsylvania, in the Pittsburgh area especially. Some names. Have you ever heard of a town called Aliquippa? Yeah. Anybody? Give, give me a, 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 your hand if you ever heard of Aliquippa. All right, so Aliquippa. Aliquippa is the name of a town, but back then, it was the name of a person, a woman, a clan mother. Clan mothers were some of the most important people in Seneca society. And this woman, Aliquippa, was a clan mother that lived right here in the Pittsburgh area. So, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about clan mothers a little bit later on. Next picture, please. You see a little bit more of the uh, of the longhouse. Some of the ladies preparing ground corn. There's a woman that's right there in the front. She's got a big wooden tube, and she's got corn in it. And she's pounding it, making corn meal to make corn bread. Next picture, please. This is the inside of a longhouse. That's where they live. Look very carefully. On the side, there are these, look like bunks. That's how they slept. They slept in those bunks on the side. And you see in the middle, there's the fire. And the, the smoke get out the hole at the top. Next picture, please. Look at this one. In this one, you can see a canoe inside the longhouse. That's how big these buildings were. They were like big, gigantic barns. Next one, please. These were the women. The women did all the farming. And you know, the, the Iroquois, the longhouse people, were mostly farmers. So they, the women did all the, all the planting of plants. And they would gather all these plants, the corn, the beans, the squash, and they would make the food out of it. The men were hunters. They would go out and shoot animals like deer and turkey and ducks and bring them back to eat but the lady control the ladies control all the all the food that they were they were growing and you can see this these ladies look at that little kid up there he is up there to scare the crows away the birds that would eat all the corn next picture please these are the men hunting they're going out, checking out the, the deer. They're going to be killing some deer and bringing it back. Next picture, please. Now you can see these men are bringing home a deer. They are red. And the ladies are still with the plants. Next picture, please. This is uh, some of the traditional clothing. As you can see, the, the women would wear a long white, a long, not white, but it would be any color, a long uh, blouse that reached all the way halfway down her skirt and you can see her skirt and the leggings the men wore leggings too I'm wearing a pair of leggings this is, this is a traditional Seneca outfit that I'm wearing I'm wearing my shirt you got the leggings, a breech cloth which is a, a cloth in the front and then another one in the back and the leggings, you put the leggings on one at a time they're not like pants you don't put them all at the same time you put one on and then the other one they, they the, the kid, anybody recognize what that kid's got in his hand? A lacrosse stick. It's really a lacrosse stick. It looks like a bat, but it's a lacrosse stick. Who, who's seen lacrosse? Who's seen what lacrosse looks like? So Native American people invented the game of lacrosse. And you might want to ask Miss Strauss about that. She's the, uh, the sports uh, person here what lacrosse is like. I don't know whether you guys have got a lacrosse team here, but on the Seneca Reservation, every Seneca, every Iroquois Reservation has a lacrosse team, because that's all they play, lacrosse and hockey. All right, next picture, please. This is a gustaway. It's one of the most important parts of a man's costume, the cap, the gustaway. Another picture, another gustaway. Now there's a very special kind of gustaway that only the chief wear. Next picture, please. What's special about this gustaway? Anybody? Just, just tell me. 
Yeah, it's got deer antlers on it. Deer antlers. And only the chief was allowed to wear the gusto away with deer antlers. But you know what? These chiefs had to be chosen by somebody. Now, when an old chief died, that they had to pick a new chief. Anybody want to guess who did the picking? Could you say that out loud? Exactly. Not just any woman. Some very special woman. They were clan mothers. They were old ladies. These ladies would get together inside the longhouse and they would put a warrior outside called pine tree warriors. And they'd be outside guarding the longhouse because this was a, a private meeting. And they would be talking to each other. You know, to pick the new chief. And when they finally came up with the conclusion, the decision of who was going to be the new chief, they would send the pine tree warrior out to his longhouse to call him, you've been chosen to be the new chief. Come on over. Huh? Uh, they didn't have much of a choice. These ladies could really, they had a lot of clout. <laughs> okay? So, so the new guy is usually a young man. Usually they want it to be, you know? So the guy would come and they would put the gust away with the antlers on him and then they would say very important words you are now the new chief of our people but mind you the same way that we got the power to put this cap on your head we've got the same authority if you're not a good chief if you don't handle yourself the way you're supposed to we can take that thing off your head so these ladies have a lot of power next picture please it's another picture of a gushed away with the antlers. Next picture. This is a picture of what some Iroquois people, some Seneca people look like now. This is in the uh, Seneca Reservation, not too far from here. If you drive up north towards Erie, the, the closest Seneca Reservation is just on the other side of New York State in Salamanca, New York, about three hours from here. Next one. Let me tell you about this guy. So they say the, the Seneca people have a story where the great spirit, that's what they call God. The great spirit was walking one day, checking out all the things he did. He took, took a look at the pine trees and said, ooh, I remember making that. That's nice. Then he looked at the deer running by. He said, ah, I remember making that. Very nice. He kept walking along. Eventually he bumped into this giant. Now let me tell you something about this giant. He was, a, he was not a nice person, just a creep, okay? This giant had magic. He could cure people. He had the power of healing, the power of curing. But you think he ever cured anybody? No. People would come to him all the time. Hey, I got a toothache. Giant, please cure my toothache. The giant would look down. You want me to cure your toothache? Here, let me punch you in the mouth. I'll cure your toothache. And you know what? My toothache feels a lot better now. Bye-bye. He was just not a nice person. So that's who the great spirit ran into, this big giant. They call him Great Rim Dweller. He said, hey, Great Rim Dweller, how are you doing? You're so big, geez. I remember making you and the Great Rim Dweller got mad. He said, what? What did you say? You say you made me? Nobody made me. I'm the great rim dealer. I'm the giant. I am so powerful. Nobody's more powerful than I am. So now the great spirit, he didn't want to have an argument. So he said, okay, you know what? Forget it. I'm, gonna, I, I, I'm having a good day today. I don't want to have an argument. He turned around and started walking away. But no, now the giant had an attitude. He goes, don't you turn your back on me. Now the great spirit turned around and he said, what do you want? Seriously, what do you want? You say you made me, so you must be stronger than me, right? So we'll have a contest to see who really is stronger. Me or you? Look at that mountain, way over there. Way over there is a mountain. Whoever can move that mountain the farthest will win the contest of strength. So the great spirit said, okay, dude, go ahead, knock yourself out, you go first. So the giant, said, I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to push it. I'm not going to pull it. Forget it. 
I'm going to move it just with magic. And he goes like this, mountain, move. And you know what? The, 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 the giant had so much magic, the mountain really did get up off its foundations ah! and moved four feet. Ah! Now the great spirit, he's like, whoa, very impressive. The, the, the giant was like, oh, full of himself. I moved the mountain four feet. Can you do better than that? Now he's looking at the great spirit like this. And all of a sudden, shh, he hears this rumbling under his feet start shaking, the ground starts shaking. So, hey, what's going on there? You know, what, what, are you, what is this? Is it an earthquake? Whoa! Hey! He hears this big sound behind him. He goes to turn around to see what it is, and he's oh, smashed his face against the mountain, which had moved 233 miles, was right next to him. Oh, man, that hurts. I broke my nose. I broke my nose. <laughs> the great spirit, don't be such a baby. Oh, he got down his knees. I'm sorry. I didn't know you were so strong. Please don't squash me like a bug. The great spirit said, get up, dude. Get up. You look ridiculous. Okay, now, I'm going to punish you for being such a creep. It's like, oh no, don't kill me. I'm not going to kill you. Stop it already. I'm not going to kill you. I'm just going to make you do things you don't like to do. Like what? From now on, you're going to have to cure people. Oh no. Yes, you will. Okay. And from then on, the Seneca people say that this guy, this giant, cures everyone. All they have to do is make a mask out of wood. Of course, they got to make it look like him with his broken nose. You see the nose? See? That's when he smashed his face against the mountain. They call him old broken nose. And they wear those masks when they're going to have a curing ceremony. Let's have the next one. Oh, yeah. Isn't that cute? That's old broken nose. Next picture. This is a wampum belt. This is the design of a wampum belt. Let's go to the next one so you can see what a wampum belt is all about. A wampum belt is a piece of craft, of art and craft made out of beads. These beads are made out of little purple shells called quahog shells, wampum belt, uh, wampum shells, white and purple. And they make five units. And each one of those units represents one of the five nations of the Iroquois Confederacy. The Seneca, the Kiyuga, the one in the middle represents a pine tree. The Onondaga, the Oneidas, and the Mohawks. You know, this, this group of, of indigenous people, they have such a wonderful constitution that they say that in the 1700s, Benjamin Franklin and some of the other founding fathers studied the constitution of the Iroquois people and copied it for our own constitution of the United States. And to this day, the Seneca people have lived in Western Pennsylvania. The last reservation, you know, because after the Revolutionary War, the Iroquois people were confined to reservations. They forced, they forced them to live on reservations. They didn't want to, but they were made to live on these little pieces of land called reservations. And the closest reservation to here was in a place called Warren County. Anybody ever heard of Warren County? Yeah, it's north of here. And there was a reservation there called the Corn Planter Grant, right on the river, on our own river, the Allegheny River. It goes all the way up there. And those native people were eventually pushed out of there in 1965 by the Army Corps of Engineers. They were told, we're gonna build a, a dam here and make a big flood control project. We're gonna make a big reservoir and you guys are in the way. Uh, okay, well, wait a minute. We got a, a contract here. It was signed by George Washington, said that we could live here forever. Too bad. You're gone. Take your piece of paper away. We put you up in a reservation, the next reservation up in New York State, and you can go live there. So they kicked all the Senecas out of Pennsylvania. There's no more 
no more Seneca reservations here. The only Senecas that live here are just random people that came to live in Pittsburgh. I know some of them, but they, they don't have a reservation anymore. That's a lot of different things like that have happened to native people all through the history of the United States. They've been kicked out of their own homes, of their own land. So I'm gonna finish up this with a story, with a, one more story. Make sure that I've got the right time here. Oh yeah, all right, so. A long time ago, the Seneca people say there was no land, just water. Water everywhere, just water all over the place. And in that water, there were animals living. Muskrats, beavers, river otters, ducks, geese, fish. And uh, up above, you could see the uh, birds flying. And then beyond that, there was a big dome, the dome of the sky. And above that, there were sky people living up there. There was a whole village with long houses and everything else. So in the, mid in the middle of that village up there in the sky was a gigantic tree. And all the flowers and fruit were glowing bright. And that was the stars. Now, the chief of the village was a powerful chief, very magical. And his wife was expecting a baby. So here she comes one day to her husband. I need for you to do something. He says, well, what do you want? You see the tree in the center of our village? I'm curious to find out what's underneath that tree. So he says, uh, well, how, how are we going to figure that out? Well, I want you to put your arms around the tree and pull it up by the roots. Like, what? Yeah, you're powerful enough. You got the magic. Pull it up. I want to see what's underneath the tree. But, well, you know, he knew better than to argue with a lady that was expecting, okay? So he goes over and puts his arms around the tree and pulls it up by the roots. And then, now there's a big hole in the sky. So Sky Woman goes to the hole and she's like looking over the edge. Whoa, next picture, please. Whoa, it's just water down there. There's nothing but water. That is amazing. I've never seen anything like that before. She wasn't being very careful. So what happens? She slipped and fell through the hole. Next picture, please. Here she comes. Her husband, oh no, oh, my wife fell, oh man. So now, here she comes, falling into the water. The geese that were flying by, they took pity on her. They put their wings together and caught her. And they said, okay, we're, we're gonna save this sky woman. But where are they gonna put her? Just water, what's she gonna do? Tread water for the rest of her life? No, so next picture, please. And the next picture. And the next picture. So the animals in the water, river otter, muskrat, ducks, they said, we got to save this woman. We got to call great turtle to bring its back, its big shell out of the water so that she can land on the shells on the turtle's back. So they called on the great turtle and the great turtle said sure I'll come up and he starts swimming up as fast as he can I am coming to the rescue the other animals dude hurry up she's gonna splash in the water already get up here I'm going as fast as I can don't rush me well, finally, okay, fine. He get, his back is above the water. There's a place to put her. They put Sky Woman on the turtle's back. But hey, she had a little bag hanging on a, a, a line, a twine around her neck that had seeds in it. So she could plant these seeds, make them grow, and live. But not on a turtle's back. Tur a turtle, turtle's back is hard. Can't plant anything on that. So the animals got an idea. Look. There's mud down at the bottom of the water. Let's one of us go down there, get some mud, bring it up, we'll put it on the center of the turtle's back. Then Sky Woman can use her magic to spread it. It'll go over the whole turtle shell and she'll have a place to live. They said, okay. The, uh, the 
the beaver. He's the biggest of the water animals. He says, okay, I'm, 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 I'll do it. I'm the strongest. I'm the biggest. I will go down and save the day. So the beaver goes down. He's swimming. He's swimming. He's swimming. But you know what? He couldn't hold his breath that long. It's too far. It's too deep. He picks cups back up. <laughs> I couldn't make it. So, okay. So now the river otter says, never mind. I'll do it. Down goes the river otter. He's the swimming down, swimming down, trying to make it. Try, no way! He has to come back. <laughs> I couldn't make it either. Oh man, everybody was doing it. The duck tried it. The, uh, the, everybody was trying it. Finally. None of them were able to do it. They couldn't hold their breath long enough. So there was one last animal left, a little animal called the muskrat. He said, I'll do it. I'll go down there, I'll get it. Oh, come on, get out of here. All these other animals were trying to get down to the bottom. They couldn't hold their breath. What is a little peep squeak, little rinky dink like you gonna do? I'll do it. So down goes the muskrat. He's swimming and swimming and swimming. He finally, believe it or not, he made it. He got down there, he gets a little bit of mud, puts it up to get his fur, and he comes back up kicking his little hind legs like you wouldn't believe. He finally got it. Oh, oh, I made it, I made it. So they were all impressed. Okay, fine. Next picture, please. Next picture. And next picture. So here's the muskrat. He comes on, that's what it looks like. He comes on the turtle shell, and she's there waiting for him. He puts the dirt on the center of the turtle's back. She gets up and starts walking around that little spot of dirt. And the more she walks, the bigger it gets. The more she walks, the bigger it gets until it covers up the whole turtle shell. And it becomes what Native Americans call Turtle Island, which is what we call North America. Next picture. There she is. Next picture. And next picture. And on this Turtle Island, the Seneca people grow the most important foods Corn, beans, and squash. They call them the three sisters. Corn, beans, and squash. But they had a lot of other food that they ate. I want to thank you for being a wonderful audience. You guys are great. Thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure, a real honor to be here at Penn Hills High School. Nyawe. <laughs> <laughs>